process. What I'll show you a little later is that we also have upgrade wizards out there that can help you make that transition. Uh, so the next thing I want to show is render action. So let's add, uh, where was I? So let's say the home controller, I'm going to have this weather widget. Uh, return partial view. Let's see. Oops. We'll just uh, create a partial view. And let's say the weather is sunny. It's Las Vegas. Great. So now I want this weather widget to be called callable from every page of my site. Uh, we'll go to Site Master. And I'll just put it uh, right above the header for whatever reason. Uh, I can call HTML dot um, render action and give it the name of the action, which is weather. Excuse me. And uh, give it the controller name, which is home. And don't forget the semicolon. Oh, did I name it something different? Oh, I didn't, didn't compile or save it. Okay, let's try that. So now we can see that as I navigate around, oops, got to fix that. Where did it go? Oh. Uh, I need to add some styling issues here. But we can see that that text is up on every page. So uh, one of the cool things, though, is uh, notice I wrote this as an action method. And so what that means is that I can actually go directly to that in the URL, uh, home slash weather, and see the text. Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I don't want to allow that. So we've added an attribute that allows you to say this attribute is only for use when you're calling render action. So we call it child action only. So the idea is that this is a child action of the overall action that's making, that's rendering out the request. So now when I build and then visit the site, you can see that I get this nice descriptive error message. Uh, it's only accessible by child request. Not only that, let's say you do want to make this thing uh, Let's say you do want to allow it to be callable both as a child action and as a main action. So you have the ability to say uh, if request dot is child, oh wait, uh, let's see, oh sorry, controller context is child action, you can have a different logic. So I could return a partial view or I could return something else. I'm just going to return some content because uh, every time I do this demo, what I do is I return a full view which uh, uses the same master, which calls the same render action, which calls the same, uh, and so on and so on. So I, I live up to the Stack Overflow name in that, in that regard. So I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to show you that when I call it directly, we just get that content. But if I call it in the context of render action, I get uh, the, you know, it still works. Not only that, I can also pass in arguments to that from my view. So if I had a weather info uh, class, uh, this time I'm intending to generate weather info. Uh, and let's say weather info had a, uh, let's make it a public class, uh, temp. And let's say, uh, so I need to generate a new, uh, new partial here. So where did I do that? There we go. Let's delete that. So we're going to create a, this time I'm going to create a strongly typed partial 
with the uh, oh it doesn't show up because I didn't compile yet. So if you're wondering what uh, keystroke I'm uh, using to uh, bring up the add view dialog, it's uh, control M, control V, and the way I remember it is it's make a view. All right, so we have this little widget here. So I, uh, so now from Site Master, I can say new weather equals. Let's see, temp equals one, two, three. Okay, let's see. Oop. Uh, I must have hit a typo. Let's see, one. Let's count braces. One, two, open, one, closed. There we go, two, closed. All right, so we can see that uh, that temp is zero. What happened there? Oh, I know, I know. So this argument needs to map, match the argument in here. So I called this info. So this route value needs to be called info. So we run the, when we call render action, we run through our uh, MVC processing uh, of, of the URL. So it's not an actual request. So someone had a misconception that we're making an actual web request. It's not, it's not quite that. It's more that we're running through the MVC pipeline in order to render that action. So now that I've matched the, the name of this parameter, info, with the parameter to the action method, Once again, I can hopefully keep the demo gods at bay, and we'll see that this temperature is 123. It's a pretty hot day in Las Vegas. All right. So, w what else is going to make you more happy about MVC2? Uh, it's open source. Uh, the source code is available, it includes jQuery and jQuery validation. And uh, this is, a, I, I think, a, a very important part of our project because it, it embodies sort of the philosophy of MVC being uh, very community driven. And uh, uh, in fact, I've, I've seen people take some of the innovations that we've done in MVC and apply them to web forms on their own. Uh, things like the strongly typed views uh, I've seen as strongly typed user controls that people have taken our uh, MSPL license code and we're able to adapt it for their projects without uh, any concern about uh, intellectual property theft. Uh, we have a project upgrade wizard. So this is going to make it really easy for you to upgrade from ASP.NET MVC 1. Uh, I'll quickly demo this. So this is a, uh, this pro you haven't seen this project upgrade wizard because it's only in the RTM of Visual Studio 2010. So I secretly installed uh, the uh, candidate build for the RTM, so don't tell my boss. And I'm going to show this to you guys. I haven't, showed the, I haven't showed this publicly anywhere else. But the idea is I have, I'm going to open project and I have this nerd dinner. I don't know if you've heard of this app. But notice that it has that little orange icon. So this is a Visual Studio 2008 pro 